So here in our carbonate family, we have our zinc carbonate, which is going to be smithsonite. Um, I really like this mineral. I like the look of it. Um, it has an interesting crystal growth and can come in a host of different colors. Um, I think it's one of the more unique carbonates that we have on our list. Um, so the first thing that I see um, when I've seen a lot of smithsonite samples is the variety in color so it can be yellow it can be green purple blue this is kind of this tealish color right um, and so a highly variable color is really typical with smithsonite another thing that I first see when I um, usually see hand samples of it is it's kind of crystal growth style so the crystal habit that it grows in Lots of times it does this gap filling, and so this brown and grayish material is host rock. So we don't want to focus on this. We want to look at the blue colorful stuff. And um, I look here and I see almost how agates can grow. And this is a really good example here, how we have this kind of layering, multiple periods of growth. Um, just like we would see in an agate or a geode. And this is really typical in smithsonite. Um, lots of times it also forms in these rounded, with these rounded crystal faces or a crystal habit. We would see it here, right on this side, where it's almost, you can't pick out a perfect crystal face, right? Because they're curved. And this is really typical of smithsonite. Um, it almost looks like uh, frozen frozen glass or a piece of candy or something like that. Um, and this is really common. So just the crystal habit and the color always helps me to identify it. It also has a conchoidal fracture, which can sometimes be difficult to help us distinguish with something like cleavage because in theory this does have um, subperfect rhombohedral cleavage, but it's difficult to see because in samples like this, where we have fractured surfaces, we see that kind of conchoidal glassy fracture. Um, that would be really typical of something if you think of like quartz or obsidian, volcanic glass. But that can also, fracture can always help us identify as well. I like this piece because you can see this side is greener, this side's bluer. So we have a full variety of color here. And we'll do our handy dandy HCL test. I'll give this a good scratch. These samples I think are quite hard. So see if I can get a little powderizing here. Yeah, a little bit. So a little bit softer than a nail probably at about a 3.5 or a 4. Let's see if it reacts. Yeah, I'm not getting any kind of effervescence there at all. So pretty non-reactive in this kind of a test. Like I always say, if you had it hotter or better powderized, it's potentially um, would react, but in this test we did not have a reaction. So. And let's see, we've done hardness. This would definitely scratch a penny. Let's give it a go. Um, but it was softer than a nail. It's always hard to find which side we want to scratch. So I made that little scratch right there. Hard to see, but definitely harder than a penny. So somewhere in between, 3.5, 4-ish. Um, and it's non-reactive. It has a great vitreous luster. Like the majority of our um, carbonates, the streak, if we were to streak this, would be white. It is moderately low density, like the majority of them. We've done cleavage, the hardness, color is super important for this one. And the crystal system, this one falls under the hexagonal crystal system, but unlike a lot of hexagonal minerals, like you could think back to corundum and our oxides, it doesn't have a really beautiful hexagonal crystal form that doesn't come out in the shape. So usually we see these kind of curved faces, ball forms for crystal habit. And that is our zinc carbonate smithsonite.